check. Check one. Can you hear me? Yeah. So we are glad that you're here with us today and willing to speak in a brave space, speak up bravely, brave space, and hope that this conversation today leads to um, white folks learning how to be allies to black indigenous people of this land and people of color. We need our allies to step up, speak up, and never give up. That is my motto, never give up. So, because we can do this together, and that's why The Truth is Loud is so important. We hope that you watch the homework assignment that was given to you this week. I enjoyed Brian Stevenson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be watching more of him. I, I, I watched like two or three videos. Yeah, and I actually had some people, Darlene, Darlene, uh, that said, I loved him. I got emails from people last night that they absolutely loved him. So, Great job to our facilitators. We love you, we love you. His story is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How to change the world, love it. <laughs> He's got some other ones. I wanna admonish everybody that even after, um, after this particular uh, event is over, if you were not on the first one, uh, which was June 27th, if you were not on that one, you can always go back to the truth is loud info, dot info to our page. We're gonna be constantly updating it with information um, on how to be an ally, on self-care, because this work is not easy and it can be frustrating and it can be tiring. Um, just trying to combat systemic racism in the family, in the workplace, uh, and everywhere else. I'm gonna give up my time because uh, you know that um, our facilitators have a little pre meeting uh, pre-event instruction for you. I want you to enjoy yourselves. I want you to be honest, be open. That is what is important. If you are not honest in these conversations, you're not gonna learn anything, okay? You must be honest. It, and it, there is no wrong thing to say. Just learn from it if you find out that it is wrong. <laughs> we want you to learn from it, okay? Darlene, Glenn, wave your hand. Darlene and Kiana, everybody else, if you can mute your mics at this point, we're going to leave it, leave your cameras on. At this point, leave all your cameras on and mute your mics. Thank you, Darlene. I'm going to go off, but I'll be back and right before we go on. We are going to start at 11. This is going to go by really fast. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Well, I leave it to Darlene and Kiana. Good morning, Kiana. Are you going to open us up with some words? Definitely. Okay. Just want to thank everybody for being here. <clears throat> this is like um, Lady A said, this is going to go extremely fast. If you were part of the last um, event, it went really, really fast. Um, we are your facilitators. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself and hand it over to Darlene to introduce herself and then share a little bit about um, what our role is and what we're asking of you all. Um, so my name is Kiana Wheeler. I identify as Black. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I've been doing anti-racism work for about 20 years. Um, and I just want to share that uh, Darlene has mentored me um, a, a lot of that time. Uh, so I'm extremely excited to be part of this with Darlene. Oh, thank you, Kiana. And I, I am Darlene Flynn. I, my title is that I'm the Director of Race and Equity and we have a small department here in Oakland, California. Uh, I am from Seattle though. I've only been here a few years. And so it's great to be working together with some of my colleagues and fellow uh, anti-racist uh, uh, activists uh, this morning and to be here with all of you as well. So I'm delighted to see you all here. Thanks for coming. And so the goal of today is really to have a conversation and just to push our learning edge. Um, we actually learn the most when we fail, when we mess up, when we step in it. The way that our brain is wired is that it doesn't want to experience that again. So when we do it, uh, 
when we do step in it, when we do fail, when we do falter, um, we learn the most. And so be open to that. That's part of the human experience. Um, be open to, um, you might not be perfect at something. Perfection is unreal. Um, it's not an actual um, reality. And so be open to just being better, just to be better human beings. Part of what racism does is it harms our humanity. It separates us from our humanity. And it does that very clearly by um, allowing us to put something like logic or legislation in front of people's humanity, rather than um, saying, look how harm is happening to that person, we say, but that person broke the law. Um, and so part of our work today is just to really connect with our humanity and to sit in um, acceptance of learning. And I just want to say that we're going to ask you before you respond to say your name and race each time before answering. Part of why we say name and race and gender um, pronouns is because it allows us a bit of understanding of how you may have engaged with institutions in your life. This gives us, gives everybody an understanding of what perspective, what lens you might be coming from. Um, there is a raise your hand feature on the toolbar. Um, and there will be chat moderators, and so feel free to use the raise your hand um, option, and somebody will be keeping track of uh, the hands that are raised. We're going to ask you to keep it succinct um, and allow time for others to respond. If it is getting long-winded, um, we will use a wrap-it-up sign um, just to make sure that other folks do have uh, time to engage. And... Part of our work is just to keep, part of our facilitator role is just to keep the discussion moving, make sure that the event maintains its timeliness, and to just connect concepts and information. There's a lot of um, lived experience that we have, and we're going to connect that to larger concepts that help us understand and hold conversations of race. And Darlene, I'm going to pass it to you. Yes, I wanted to just say a little bit about the guidelines. Just remember that we want to um, stay focused on being involved, taking risks, putting ourselves out there. Don't be afraid. It's okay. It's a brave space. Um, we've already covered if mistakes happen, we'll learn from them. So don't worry. No, re no reason to get tight about that. Um, also, step forward, step back. This is where we watch how we share airtime. Some of us speak more easily on these topics, like myself. We often end up in the front of the room because we do that. Um, but we want to make sure that those who take a little longer to raise their hand have a chance to get in there, give some space to them. And those of you that tend to be shy, a little bit timid, push yourselves. That's your, your task, is to push yourself to speak and to, to show yourself and to share your, your wisdom and also your learning experience with the group. So... Um, defensiveness can happen. That's where I call on my curiosity when I start feeling defensive because someone's pointing something out to me or bringing up something that I haven't thought about before. That's where I just encourage myself to get really curious about what's this about? Why am I feeling this way about it? What can I learn from it? I think we're going to have a great time together. Thank you all for observing those simple ground rules. And I just want to add... Um... One thing, is that okay, Darlene? Yeah, please. I just wanna add, well, two things. One, um, it is not your role in this um, experience to respond to others' lived experience. It's not your role to fix anyone. It's not your role to answer for anyone. Your role today is to really experience or frame your own lived experience. Sometimes in these environments, um, folks can share, well, this is what I did when that happened to me. And that's actually not the role of today. The role of today is really just to share from a, the I experience. Um, and the second thing I would like to name is that there's two things that Darlene and I will play with today. One of those is silence. In our society, silence is, um, silence generally means 
an idea of not knowing. And that's not true across multiple cultures. Um, silence is used in multiple cultures in support of one another. Silence is used to um, share in burdens and trauma with one another. It is not something around if you do or do not know. And so we're gonna play with silence a little bit, meaning that um, if there's folks with hands up who've spoken a lot, we'll probably um, allow the silence for others who think before, I'm a person who thinks out loud and there's other people who think before they speak. And unfortunately that's not me. I I'm working on that, but um, there's a lot of people who need to just take time and we will allow that time. Um, and so silence is something that we are going to hold in a community together. Um, and as well, um, there's this other frame that our society holds that if you make a mistake, you are a mistake. And that's just simply not true. And we're going to push on um, that understanding to make sure that it's okay that people are in their learning edge. Okay. Um, did we want to just, again, take a moment to recognize the land that we're on and whose land that we're on, Kiana? Yeah. Yeah. This is occupied land. This is indigenous land. Here in Oakland, we're on the Ohlone people's land. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest or in Seattle area, it's the land of the Duwamish. Uh, many lives and much blood was shed uh, over this land. Many people died. People were pushed off. It is important for us to remember, as Brian Stevenson pointed out in the video, the history of this country and how it has shaped our present time as well as our past. So, um, we'd like to start our sessions by acknowledging that we are on occupied land and that the lives of indigenous people have been harmed so that we could, so that we could be here. It's a heavy thing to remember, but it's an important thing for us to center as we begin this conversation about race. Thank you so much, Darlene and uh, Kiana. I am so glad I myself have come under the tutelage of Darlene Flynn. Uh, I admire both of these women so very much. Um, and you are going to enjoy this conversation. In order to enjoy it though, I wanna remind you once again that you have to be a part of the conversation. Um, every, I know some people are shy and maybe you don't wanna speak up, but here this is a brave space. And as they said, this is a time for us to ask questions, to be inquisitive and to be honest about what we know and what we don't know. For me, and this is a, just a personal note for me, I love talking to people, especially people that I don't know, people who don't look like me, people whose culture is different from mine, because I learn so much more. I get recipes from people all over the world just by talking to them, because I like to eat, y'all. <laughs> I love to eat. <laughs> I just got a cauliflower recipe the other night from somebody that I just can't wait to do. But, and, and that's putting a little light a little lightness to the conversation because we really do, talking to people is important. That's why this is important to me. The truth is loud. We have to face some truth and that's what we're gonna do today. So we have about five minutes because we're still letting people in. Does anybody have any questions before we actually get started? And all you have to do is like, um, you're gonna have to, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. So raise your hand. So Anissa, I see you have your hand raised, Anissa. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, so this is Anissa. I use she, her, and hers. And I originally signed up just to be a listener. Yes. Does that mean I will only be listening today? Oh, I mean, I'm asking a question now. But I kind of <laughs> interpreting that maybe it's going to be a more conversational than even if you just signed up to be only a listener today. Thank so you. Sign it, so yeah, let me explain that to you. Thank you. That's a good question. So if you signed up to be a listener, then you will only have the opportunity. I'm gonna ask you to, to hide your video so that only the people that are on the panel will be talking. Now, if you decide that you wanna be on the panel, that's fine, but you must leave your video up and only speak when, you know, when, uh, when you're saying something. Because what will happen is we have so many people, because there's a lot of people <laughs> today, we have so many people that we can't get to everybody, but we do want, the conversation we do want people to talk some people are just shy and don't want to so you will we will ask that you hide your video if you are going to be a part of the actual conversation remember that you're going to be recorded 
and this will be on YouTube because it's an instructional video. So if you're shy and don't want to be <laughs> on camera, we'll ask that you um, mute uh, your video, which I'm gonna ask you to do now because we have about five minutes, exactly five minutes before we start. But everybody else that will be talking, speaking bravely with our facilitators, um, leave your, leave your uh, audio muted, but leave your visual on so that we can see you and you will be a part of the conversation. If you are on the listening panel, you can only ask questions in the chat room um, and we will try to get to them, but this is really about the people who are speaking up bravely and on the panel. And we will try to get to the people in the listening area. We will get to your questions later through the facilitators because a survey will be sent out. And then we will have a follow-up with each and every one of you um, next week after the video is posted to the truthisloud.info website. Did I get it right? <laughs> I want to once again thank Roz, who is in the background. She's our videographer for today. She does all of our postings. She works really, really hard, y'all. If you could just give a little silent clap for her, because nobody knows what goes on in the background. Yeah, she's, she's doing it um, back there, going nuts. So I love you, Roz. I know you're back there somewhere. So um, we have five minutes. If Kiana or Darlene want to say anything, um, nod your head. Otherwise, I'm going to put some music on for five minutes. Okay, Kiana wants to speak. I'm going to be off camera now, y'all, for a while. Um, they will get started at exactly 11 o'clock. Um, I will come back on at 10.59. All righty. Here you go, Kiana. I just want to remind folks that when we speak to identify our race, I'm going to ask something very specifically. Um, race is constructed. It has been constructed from white normativity, from whiteness. Um, it is something that was put on top of people of color. And so I'm going to ask that when folks who are um, Black, Indigenous, or people of color identify themselves to feel free to identify both their race and their ethnicity if they'd like. Um, meaning that when the category of Asian was created um, for the multiple um, Asian ethnicities, uh, Asian folks don't go around saying, are you Asian? They say, are you Vietnamese? Are you Cambodian? Um, Folks who are Latinx don't go around saying, are you Hispanic or Latino? They go around saying, are you Guatemalan? Are you Honduran? And so feel free to name the race that you've been um, forced to fit into. Um, and then feel free to name the ethnicity. For white folks, I'm going to ask you to stick with naming white and to really hold that as uh, what it means to be forced to identify as something. Caucasian is not um, the same as white. Caucasian is an ethnicity that got grounded in our language long, long time ago. Um, if white feels uncomfortable, hold that discomfort um, because that is the same discomfort that folks of color, uh, black and brown folks have had to hold for a long time. And so I'm gonna ask you if you were white to just name that you were white. And um, before you speak, if you are a person of color, if you are black or brown, feel free to name the race you've been assigned um, and the ethnicity that uh, is um, part of your lived experience. This reminds me that I forgot to identify myself as black. I'm also biracial, my mother was white, and so I'm very light-skinned, and I, I identify that part of myself because of white supremacy and because of the um, way that colorism shapes our lives. Um, but I was raised in black community uh, because my father was black, and uh, I was born in the 50s when things were very segregated. And so um, I definitely identify as a black person in, a, in the United States, um, recognizing that I also have benefited from light skin privilege throughout my entire life. So um, my gender pronouns are she and her and hers. Thanks. All right, at this time it is now 10.59. We are about to get started. Um, out of the 92 people, we have 60 right now that are on. If you are not a part, if you do not wish to be a part of the actual panel, you can turn your video off now and please stay muted. If you are a part of the actual conversation, we're gonna ask that you leave your video on 
and only have your only unmute yourself when you're talking when you're speaking if you need to raise your hand there is a hand button <laughs> um, at the at the end otherwise you can talk in the chat if you're on the panel and we miss you otherwise myself and Roz will be getting to you as soon as possible I am Lady A I am a child of God I am a black woman and I am blessed to be here today Thank you all so much for being here. It is now 11.01. Kiana and Darlene, I leave this in your hands. Can you hear me?